All right, let's bring Doug Flynn in on this, certified financial planner, co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management. And, you know, you can talk, I want to talk in a moment about our economy and those interest rates, um, one specific portion of them uh, particularly. But let me start with China. There's a meeting happening over the last couple of days where, you know, it's about that Belt and Road Initiative. But you have Vladimir Putin, you have Xi Jinping getting together on a day, by the way, when Chinese economic growth numbers came out, they were pretty good in a relative basis, right? A little better than expected. Mm -hmm. What should we think about China's economy, which is also so important for better or worse to our own? True. Uh, yeah, they did come in with a little better numbers than they were expecting. But the, the further takeaway, if you look into it, is they actually lowered next year's expectations. Hmm. So it's very similar to what we have going on here with corporations that maybe they have a little bit of a pop better than they thought now, primarily because of consumer spending. Their consumers over there are spending as well. Uh, but next year, they actually lowered their estimates. You know, one of the biggest things I find with China and their data, though, is like they up until June, they were reporting, um, you know, teenage unemployment numbers, which was at 21 percent. And then they didn't like those numbers. So they just said, you know what? We're not going to put those out anymore. Right. And so that's the problem with China is that you don't always get consistent data. And some of it is suspect. Yeah, they have a little bit of a luxury in terms of the types of figures that they can put out <laughs> the way they handle things. Um, I said I wanted to talk about our economy and talk about interest rates. And, and as I said, these Treasury yields are, I guess, a big deal in the stock market today. But the headline that stood out to me was the mortgage rates, the highest yeah. on a mortgage rate in 20 plus years, November of 2020. Um, what correct. do you make of that? Yeah, and, and it, it makes sense to me that, um, you know, when you have that situation, you also have more mortgage applications at the lowest point since 1995. We've been talking about this, Connell, as you know, that we were going to bump up against the 8% mortgage. It happened a little bit sooner. And, and it goes off the 10-year Treasury, which almost hit 5% again. So I'm going to call that, you know, it's 4.9 and change. That's the trigger there that caused it to get to the 8% number. But you have to watch it. We may squarely get over 5% on the Treasury, which means that you're going to have even higher mortgage rates still. And that's the pressure that's going on. You, ha you, ha you don't have a lot of inventory. You have people that are sitting in a house that have a 3% mortgage. Even if they want to get a bigger house, do they want to pay 8% for the bigger house? So there's a l very little movement, and eventually this is all going to catch up with us. Well, if that's the point. It is about timing to some extent, and it's, a, it's very difficult to time something like this. But I, I'm just assuming that you have clients that come in and say, you know, Doug, I'm thinking I'd like to sell my house. Maybe it's an older person there. I'm downsizing, whatever the case may be. And then, mm -hmm. Or you have people that are younger, they're looking for a house. What do you tell people that you know, they should be thinking about the timing of all of this when they ask you? You know, it's if if this is going to be your home for the next 20 or 30 years, you will eventually at one point hopefully have a chance to refinance later. Right. What we had for a really long time with really low interest rates were people that thought they could get into a home and maybe flip it in a couple of years. I think that you have to push to the side. You have to look at personal residential real estate more as like a home I'm going to stick with. And if it's seven, 10 years or longer, then, then don't stop doing that. Right. Uh, but I don't know that I'd be jumping into things with the numbers where they are because of e even the variable rate numbers that are out are so high. I, those scare the, the heck out of me. So you have to be very careful. All right, Doug, as always, thank you for the perspective. And we'll talk to you again soon. Doug Flynn on the uh, financial news for us.